next episode around uh, show off your CI CD pipeline, uh, which I'm doing with a lot of community builders worldwide. Um, today, um, I'm very happy to have Wolfgang on the call uh, that is going to talk to us about um, a pipeline that he has been building that he has been using. Wolfgang, very warm welcome to the show. Hello, Johannes. Nice to be on your show of series here. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to show today um, a code pipeline was set up completely with CDK code. So the pipeline itself is made with CDK and all the resources going to be deployed are CDK code. Uh, it's going to deploy in, in different accounts um, from the setup. In, in my example here, in my own account, I'm, I'm using one account. Um, but it's easy to set up for, for different staging accounts. Um, and it's, it's going to show how to set up the pipeline as uh, a project itself and how the pipeline runs and what kind of steps are executed and what's the result of it. Cool, thanks. Looking forward to see that. Before mm -hmm. we go there, what do you do on a regular basis, on a daily basis? Is this what you do for life or um, are you working <laughs> as a consultant? What is your... Yeah. That's Thanks. what I do. That's what I do for life. Um, I am AWS architect. Um, I got our own company. Um, I'm located here in South Brazil in Santa Catarina and have a um, AWS and cloud company. Uh, we are working for German clients or European clients and also uh, starting by now more growing on the Brazilian market uh, with clients here uh, in the location. And we do everything with cloud, but mostly AWS, helping um, clients to migrate basically to the cloud, optimizing existing cloud um, environments and doing this normally in a kind of um, project where the client itself is involved with some technicians and we are kind of specialists to, to show the customers uh, um, the best practices and enable also the customer to continue maintaining all cloud services once we have left this project. Cool, that sounds like a very challenging, uh, but also very interesting role. Um, did I tell you that I've been living in Argentina for four years? I think I didn't, right? No, I, I never heard it. That's uh, nice yeah. to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's for me, it was really good. So I still speak Spanish, um, but uh, I, I hardly use it, unfortunately. Cool, so let's get into, into your pipeline. Um, so um, let's let's start sharing your screen, um, so we can uh, start looking at what have you actually built or what you what what you have that that others can take away from here. So uh, please go ahead and start sharing your screen, and then I can do my stuff on my side. Okay, so here we are, and. Feel free to get started. Okay. So first of all, maybe I can show here my GitHub repository um, where you can find also the example code. So this is on GitHub. Uh, this is my, my um, repositories here. And here is a bunch of um, repositories and projects. This one is the CDK pipeline. And you can see here the project. Um, I have already deployed it here um, in my private, that's my, that's not the, the project account, that's my account. And I have here deployed uh, the pipelines. Um, this is a pipeline and this is a prod pipeline. It's deployed twice. So we have a pipeline for dev account. You can see here, I'm gonna explain this a little bit more in detail for the dev and for QA. This is the QA. And to separate more um, from, from the IM um, um, permissions, I've created here a different pipeline for prod. So we can really restrict prod pipeline to a couple of users um, to save our prod environment. Okay, so the whole um, pipeline is a CDK project. Mm -hmm. which you have seen there in the GitHub repository. So I will not just gonna... be, be, Before we go in there, just a stupid question. So this is really open source and others can also use this uh, from you? Um, or yeah. Is this... This is... yeah. No, this is my, uh, a private code here. So this is not a, a company a repository or... And this is also an example, which is um, I have set up very basic. Um, it's, it's an example code. 
so I'm not deploying here a sophisticated environment. Um, I'm, I'm, this is um, a kind of um, concerning the resources which are going to be um, deployed. It's a hello world. So okay. I'm deploying, deploying a three bucket, a ECR repository, some lambdas. I have set up also um, kind of tests, lambda test, unit test, acceptance test, but they're a, a, a just a simple implementation. So that's up for everybody to change with his real life um, requirements and test them. Okay, cool. Okay. Close. Okay, besides this um, uh, GitHub repo here, you have also here some readme and some information. Just to let me know, I have also a blog about a, a, a code pipeline with CDK Python. Um, you find this on my company page. There are uh, some blogs, and here we can also maybe get some more uh, from the requirements. Uh, uh, what was the requirement to build this pipeline? So the abstract. Um, situation of course is we want to deploy aws re um, resources in different accounts so we have a setup with a dev account a, a inter account or a qa account a proto account doesn't matter how many could be three or four and um, we want to deploy these resources um, to deploy these resources we are introducing a force account a toolchain account where our code pipeline, code pipeline is going to be deployed so we could deploy it in one of these accounts but that would mix up a little bit the separation of concerns for example if we would put it in the dev account so it's better to really separate separate it and this means we will have a setup of four accounts toolchain account where could be also um, serve as kind of a shared services account to put in some ecr repos if we need container images for, for more than one stage parameter stores or something um, so we're going to deploy maybe some resources in the own um, toolchain account where the pipeline is, and we're going to deploy the same resources three times in our stages, right? That's mm -hmm. the basic setup. This means we have um, here a simplified diagram, not showing all resources from AWS. I don't have included here any VPCs or stuff, mm -hmm. but basically I have the code pipeline in my toolchain account. Um, you can set up this code commit also in the AWS. I'm using by now because it's a public um, GitHub here. My example, I'm using GitHub here. And uh, the pipeline runs and deploys first in its own toolchain stage. Uh, one example resource, it's an ECR repo. And it's then deploying these example resources to the dev, to the QA, and the prod. Mm -hmm. um, there's one difference actually here. Um, in my deployment, I'm going to show by now, I have separated the, uh, the pipeline uh, in two pipelines. So actually it's not one pipeline deploying to all three. It's actually one pipeline deploying to dev and QA and one pipeline uh, deploying to prod. So yeah. this makes it easier to control the permissions. Yeah, and that means that you can then granularly control who is allowed to start the pipelines. So I would understand that the uh, the lower environment pipelines are triggered by git but the production pipeline is something that you would need to trigger manually right okay yeah. so, so also also uh, uh, the, the qa is only um continuing once you have a manual approval we're going to mm -hmm. see this in a second so it starts building the dev and then after dev all the tests run successfully it comes to a you can see this actually here in one more diagram um pipeline is looking like this actually so um it got a tool chain stage where the tool chain resource is going to be deployed then we have the dev and the qa and here we have a manual approval okay. and if we would have the pipeline uh, the three stages uh, in one pipeline we would have also approval for prod in my case it's even separated so prod will not be able to start from from this pipeline and it looks like this we can have actually a look in this in the real pipeline before we maybe take a look in the cdk project so we got an idea how does this look like on aws so we have to get here in the developer tools in the code pipeline and i uh, you can see i got there two pipelines and you are now in the in the uh, toolchain account right yeah. right I'm in the toolchain account, but one note on this, because I'm I'm using this as an example here to for your show of videos. I have not um, 
set up the other three accounts. So maybe just one look at the project before we continue there. Um, there's a CDK JSON in a CDK project, and here you can config some parameters for, for the CDK project. What is important also for the people who are going to clone this maybe, by now I have changed this because I don't want to share my, my AWS <laughs> account ID, but here you have to put your account IDs for the tooling, for the dev, for the QA, and for the prod account, and also for you here for the connection AR. Um, in my setup, I'm showing now, I'm using four times the same account ID. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm using this account by now as a tool chain, as a dev, as a prod, as a QA account. So that's just for, for the simple example. That makes of sense, course, yeah. Yeah, of course, you have to consider then one thing. Um, as you can see, I have stopped the, the prod pipeline and I have not progressed so far the QA because since I'm using the same account for dev, QA, and prod, would mean it would deploy the same recourses again, which are already deployed for dev, and that would cause an error. So uh, it's supposed to be to deploy the QA uh, resources in a different account. Mm -hmm. And, and um, in, in my case, it, it would deploy it again in the dev account because I've set it up like this. So that's why I have never started here the QA and also okay. stopped the prod. Makes so, sense. Yeah. Sorry. So this means that the CDK code that you have in the repository is not environment aware in this case. It really assumes that it is deployed into different accounts depending on the stage where you are. Right. 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 Because We're I, gonna, yeah. 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 So we can see the CDK code maybe in a second. Um, because uh, I've it, been, so just a question, right? I've been playing around with CDK um, in, a, in a way like you can have a parameter that defines the environment and then you can actually deploy the same CDK application multiple times into one, into one account. Um, is this something that you have also done and that you think is, is worth exploring or is this best practice what, you, what we're doing here? Well, for our pipeline, I think it's, it's good to use these stages and add your your stacks or, or what you have, your constructs to the stages. Um, so you can better control what you're deploying there. Um, as we can see here, for example, I have um, here my tool chain resources I'm going to deploy. So there's basically just a ECR repo. It's a stack. And then we are deploying the dev uh, um, resources, the so stacks. So this is a job definition, a lambda, and um, yeah, basically these two. This would mean we can see by now here in the cloud formations um, that there has been deployed, for example, the devs, job devs, the lambda, and the S3 stack here in my account. And this is controlled by the, the stage, um, which holds the cloud formation stacks. And this way, um, the QA, for example, holds the same stacks, but pointing to a different account. And this is um, a clean way to really separate the deployments in here. Uh, in my example, of course, once again, I'm deploying QA and DEF in the same account. So mm -hmm. I've mixed up a little bit here. Actually, of course. I, you can see I have here toolchain ECR repo stack, um, which is in the same account. But now this should be actually uh, in the toolchain account should actually only be the first for one and everything else here should be in a different account, but I don't want to switch around mm -hmm. here all the time here. Um, okay, so that's basically the setup of the, um, the pipeline and how it looks like in uh, here in the AWS console. We can trigger it manually actually here by um, saying release change and it will start it is on, also going to be triggered if I do a commit in my uh, GitHub repo. So then it will start automatically. Um, maybe just one sentence on the steps we have here. The first step is to uh, check out the source. Mm -hmm. And then it will do a build step, a code build um, job, which do the synthesize command of the CDK. So this is going to uh, compile the, the CDK classes to CloudFormation. Is this um, going to... Is this going to be on all parts of the CDK code or is this going to be on the pipeline part of the CDK project? On all parts. This okay. is uh, um, kind of, if, if we would do here in the project, it's a synth command. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of the same. 
So okay. this is going to compile all the um, CDK constructs to the CDK out and going to generate here the CloudFormation with giant JSON format. And this is uh, the same manually here in my local environment as the pipeline does here in the synth step. Then we have this update pipeline, the self mutates um, um, a stage, uh, a step, which is doing one thing. We have a pipeline, which is also a CDK construct, right? I'm going to deep dive a little bit in a second. But if you do, for example, here change and you add, you add one more uh, action for tests or you remove something, you, you add uh, something in, in your stages, um, the pipeline itself must be um, uh, um, changed, right? Must be adapted. So therefore we have the self mutate um, to um, adapt the pipeline once there is a, a need to change the pipeline itself. It's going to change the mm -hmm. pipeline and start from the very beginning again. That's important to know. Mm -hmm. And maybe also one um, note on this code pipeline by CDK. Um, once the CDK pipeline is deployed and running, it's enough to do, for example, here, git push, uh, update your, your CDK constructs. And once you have um, uh, pushed this to the GitHub, the pipeline will run and will update your resources here on this CloudFormation stack. But on the very first time, you have to do a CDK deploy. Let's see, for example, what we got here for stacks in this project. So we you will see by the list command all the CloudFormation stacks which should be deployed. And we also should see the pipeline stack itself. And for the very first time, if your account here is empty, and you not have deployed the pipeline, you need to deploy the pipeline with CDK deploy uh, and the name of the pipeline stack. The pipeline cannot deploy itself <laughs> once it has been not deployed. So that's the first time you have to do a CDK command line mm -hmm. um, action. But then once this is running, um, for example, so this would mean you have to run a CDK pipeline to deploy this. Of course, the very first, first time you also have to install the, the roles and do a CDK bootstrap. But once set up, um, you do just change this here and do an update. Right. So next, as we can see here in the pipeline, we have tool change stage and uh, one example stack. And we have also a Lambda test and unit test. We're going to show where they are on the project in a second. And once the tool chain is deployed, do we also right? see test reports somehow for for the executed yeah. tests? Okay, so you can find the here in the details. They're mm -hmm. gonna it depends on your output which you have uh, um, coded there in the in the test itself. You can see it there. Um, next, we have the dev resources, and then we can see we have a manual approval for QA. And if I would say approve it would continue here to deploy by now the QA. Mm -hmm. And we can take maybe a look on the prod pipeline. It looks a little bit different. We're gonna see in the code why it's different. Now that's, uh, so it has again the synth, uh, the self mutate, but it got here not def and QA, it got the prod stage. And only once there is no manual approval, it's just deploying to prod. Mm -hmm. And now we can maybe have a look. This how the CDK a question. Project is a, will this, right. will the, the, the prod pipeline, will this pick up already synthesized um, CDK stacks or will this pick up the CDK from source code and then deploy from source code? Yeah, from source code. Okay. Because um, you can um, define, um, we can see this here actually uh, in a second in the app. You can define the branches for 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 dev and, and for prod. So for example, you would use for dev development branch and for, you would use for prod main. So in this means the prod pipeline really has to do a checkout and, and cannot yep. relay on the synthesized stacks from the dev pipeline. Yep, so, makes sense. Um, Okay, let's take a look in the, in the project here. As we have seen, important is the CDK chase and you have to adapt this if you want to use the pipeline to, to your settings and accounts. And the next, the entry point for each CDK project is the app Python, right? There where we define the very first stacks or, mm -hmm. or CDK construct to uh, be deployed. 
and we can see here also we have some some variables so the account numbers which we are passing then to to the pattern here i got these bootstrap roles to deploy from the tools uh, from the tool chain to the dev or qa abroad we need a cross account role right so the dev account must allow the tool chain account to deploy there and therefore we have these um accounts from uh, uh, these roles uh, access from toolchain account uh, and I'm, here sm I'm, I'm right? smiling because i think uh, you already look ha had a look on code catalyst as well right and code catalyst right. essentially tries to remove that toolchain account right uh -huh. and put you into the position of not having the need to manage your infrastructure for the tools right so i think mm -hmm. and that's that that is at least one of the interesting things that code catalyst brings yeah, that's a good good concept. I think um, to to get rid of the setup um, of of the tool chain and all the cross account um, roles and and settings, this can be a little bit complicated. Um, if you get used to it, uh, if you have deployed three four pipelines, it is more easy. But I think for the very first time, it can be a little bit hard for the developer. And to easy up this, is probably a good idea. Yeah. Okay, and here finally we we can see I got a the same pipeline defined as a prod pipeline, and um, as a normal pipeline, and you can see this uh, here. So the pipeline stack um, itself is a CDK code. Again, we can see it here. It's a CDK construct, and I have also showed here in this um, code in the CDK project the concept of one great advantage of CDK. Um, the usage of um, object orientation. So with CDK code, you can subclass, for example, this is my generic pipeline stack, which is here in the folder generic. I have also the infrastructure folder with CIDC with the project pipeline, which is a subclass of the generic pipeline stack. So this means, for example, I could use this generic pipeline stack as a base class superclass for many projects but if, if in some project i have to change maybe some settings i don't want to have infrastructure tests or i don't want to have lambda tests because there are no lambdas in the project i want to use some additional um tests maybe i could mm -hmm. adapt the superclass here by subclassing with this class and for example here there's a simple override example it overrides one of the superclass methods and changes the code uh, the commands which are executed here. So this is also shown here in this example. And this is something you cannot do with CloudFormation. CloudFormation is more based on copy paste. And here was the Python code in CDK that's great for reusing some uh, stacks or, or, or constructs and creating kind of your own repository which yeah. you reuse. Okay, here is the pipeline. Uh, it, it reads some variables, the account, and you can see here the repo and also the branch. And it then creates a pipeline with the synth step as an input parameter and the, also the source as the input parameter. This is basically the command to create really the pipeline. The pipeline then um, adds some other components which are following here. For example, here is tool chain deploy which is of type stage and here in these stages we have the stages for the tool chain for the dev qa and prod you add your resources mm -hmm. your stacks for example this is a stack class uh, ecr stack and it is very simple setup it just have a one liner mm -hmm. um, our ecr repo and so as a simple example so you can add here more um, stacks or, or straight ahead CDK construct and meaning they are part of the stage um, ends up, they would be listed up here in the stage as a resource. So we can see here the tool chain stage and here is exactly the ECR repo stack which is added here. Okay. So if I would add here one more, for example, uh, S3 bucket or EC2 instance, you would see here more uh, resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the toolchain deploy, which is here found in the pipeline. And next, we are adding here some 
tests, for example, the infrastructure unit tests uh, and the Lambda tests. And these you can also see here, Lambda tests mm -hmm. and unit tests, right? And this, this then test... executes the corresponding tests within right. your source code, okay. Right, let's take a look in the method for the uh, test. I have all these um, methods here uh, defined here in the class under this line um, to allow to overwrite them in the subclass, which I have showed them. So we have here the infrastructure, infrastructure unit test. It's also separated with its own methods command. And here, for example, we can see we are executing PyTest generic infrastructure tests. So these tests are generic infrastructure tests are found in here. So anything you put in there, which is a unit test for Python, it's going to be executed and you can uh, uh, let them run in your pipeline step here for the unit test. The same to the Lambda tests. We can see here, these are in infrastructure Lambdas test. So they are in infrastructure Lambdas test. And this means anything you put in here is going to be executed in this action here for the toolchain. Okay. So we have seen the toolchain stage. And next is going to be the dev. Um, where's the dev? Here's the dev. The dev stage. Let's take a look on the dev stage. And this one is um, set up with a little bit more resources, three resources. I got a three stack. I got a chop dev stack for batch environments. And I got a Lambda function here. Um, with this construct mm -hmm. and we can see here we should find these the chop dev the lambda and the s3 do you happen to to know what the difference between prepare and deploy here is well it first um it does the prepare and executes the deploy after it so i think it here it checks kind of um the assets which are also being passed um, to the CloudFormation stacks, probably change syntax. Um, in case of it's already deployed, it will set up a, mm -hmm. a change set and then finally doing the deployment. So there are always two action prepare and uh, uh, deploy. Right. So this one is an example for a stage where we have these three. And we can see this is actually the same for dev. And for QA, I'm using the same stage. So QA, of course, does not have a different one. I'm just passing another name to it. So I can reuse the class, the CDK cloud, which is defining as a resource to be deployed. Also, the prod is using the same one. I'm just passing this one as a uh, as the prod environment, right? So in this, uh, stage here in the app deploy are uh, the resources defined which are going to be deployed in in dev in QA and in prod. Yeah. And the stacks itself, for for example, um, let's take a look at the lambda. They are defined here in the CDK project uh, with a normal convention. As you set up a CDK project, you um, can find these. For example, this one is in infrastructure, and I have. Um, categorize this a little bit here as a batch uh, for a batch environment. Here is for CD, CICD, the pipeline itself and the stages. And here's for the lambdas, for example. And this one is a, a CDK stack, which is creating a lambda function. The course, uh, the code itself for the lambda function, it's separated. It's set up here in the Lambda source folder. So this is um, following CDK best practices. Um, this is not um, uh, special for the pipeline. And here is basically already the end of the pipeline. Once we have also defined the QA stage, and the pipeline is done or otherwise for the broad pipeline, it's a broad step. We can see here also maybe the manual approval step 
Um, mm. Before the QA, let me see where is this one here. Here, for example, is the manual approval step, which you have to click as a pipeline user mm -hmm. to move the pipeline to the QA stage. Okay. Cool. Now let's look at the unit tests and the acceptance tests that you have defined, especially in the stage before, uh, right after the deployment, I think, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that we had. Um, we execute just unit tests. We, do we measure code coverage or something like that? In this simple example, no, okay. it's not set up yet. I, in the project, it's set up. We can take a look up here, for example, how this looks like in here. So here, this is executing the tests. And because I'm just running a simple PyTest um, um, command, it's only executing this. But of course, you can set up with the PyTest um, um, configurations. You can set up here reports. You can set up coverages. And you can uh, also generate report there. Um, but um, uh, since the project is, is already a little bit harder to understand, I didn't want to blow, blow up with too much features. Um, this is basically up to do here in the definitions for the test, where you're doing the commands for the test. In this part, you have to edit everything concerning test, execution, coverage, and reports. Okay, cool, great. So this, this series uh, starts to turn into a Johannes needs to learn Python uh, thing because I've not done much <laughs> Python before. Um, and I've always tried to get around Python. Um, and uh, now you're the second person uh, presenting Python code here. So I'm learning a lot with this as well. So thank you so much. Yeah, uh, yeah I, li I like for CDK Python a lot. From, from my background, I'm, I programmed a lot of Java. So I'm, I'm actually... Uh, program 15 years Java, Java Enterprise, Spring, and so on. And I liked very much Java, but it's um, for CDK, I think I would always prefer Python because it's just uh, uh, the setup is, is much smaller and it's, it's, it's not so heavy. That's yeah, the whole Java setup. We, we, we could argue about that now, right? So I'm also, <laughs> a, I'm also a Java user at the end, right? Um, but I would rather go with TypeScript than Python in this case. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing myself because uh, the CDK itself is written in, in TypeScript, right? So um, that is a little bit more, I was hoping mm -hmm. for getting a little bit more support, right? Um, yeah. But uh, I think it doesn't really matter. And you need to choose, and this is what CDK is great for. You need to choose the technology that makes you happy at the end, right? Yeah. Uh, and that you can use. So this is really, um, and it's cool uh, to have that cho those choices. Yeah. Okay. Maybe for those for those listeners who are not uh, really deep into CDK yet, it's good to have a look here on this AWS site, the AWS CDK workshop. And there you can find a really good documentation on how to create your first CDK project. And you can find here also what we just have talked about, the different languages which are supported. So we have Python and we have Java, we have TypeScript, and we have some more. I wouldn't actually want to use net .net. <laughs> But yeah, for example, very common is I think TypeScript and in, in Python and also Go which are uh, widely used. Um, and this is a good uh, point to get in and set up a first project, uh, set up the first command. And if uh, somebody hadn't done this yet, it, it would be really uh, uh, helpful to do this first, setting up an easy CDK project before starting with the pipeline. And uh, it would help to get an understanding on, on the project about the CDK class itself. Yep, that's good, that's cool. Great. So uh, I think, uh, what, what what else did you want to show from the project, Wolfgang? Um, because if not, we can move over to kind of a wrap up. Um, mm -hmm. I think um, this is quite the most stuff. We can maybe just have a look a little bit on here. For example, what we have created here on the CSD tools, we have the pipelines um, with CDK. You can create your pipelines, of course, also in, on the um, UI. The pipeline itself, once you have selected one, you get the history, right? You can see the execution history for the pipeline also. Um, you can, which I have not set up for this example, you, you can set up quite uh, a bunch of notifications. For example, um, if you want to get 
notified when a stage failed or the whole pipeline failed or someone maybe did not execute the manual approval, you can set up as an S topic and email notification on this. Um, but this is something that you would also be able to do in code, right? Of course, so, of, yeah. of course, yeah. Just showing this here by now yeah. as, as it also works on the UI. But of course, you would set up this in the CDK uh, construct for the pipeline, the, the notification. And the pipeline, as we have seen, is, is basically set up um, with um, code build steps. So most of these parts here are always, as you can see, code builds. So the Synth uh, and also the uh, CloudFormation deployments here. And this means when we take a look here in, in code, uh, code build, not code deploy, we can see all these projects which have been set up by the code pipeline. And also one more thing maybe to take a look. Um, you will find this in the readme of my documentation from the GitHub or also in the blog. Um, if you're not using code um, commit, if you're using, for example, GitHub or any other um, repository outside AWS, yeah. you have to set up here this connection. So a GitHub connection um, and connecting your GitHub repository AWS. And this will mean here in the, let me see if I can find this here in the settings you will find this AWS connector for GitHub, which uh, connects and also um, um, uses a uh, uh, source for you, all the notifications, for example, on pushes or on pull requests and all this stuff. Mm. Okay, so I think cool. so much information on this. So much information on this, yes. And if you would stop sharing your screen now, then I can put you back on spot. Cool. Um, yeah, this is great input. Um, I think for a lot of people that are starting their journey with CDK and CDK pipelines, this is exactly what they need um, to, to get going, right? Um, what do you think that you would want to do? That You just said this is an example project, right? What is things that you would add in a professional project, I would say? Um, is that stuff that you're maybe missing today in this example? Yeah, there are some... some... Um, some chances to to stuff other. For example, what I've not set up in uh, this simple example because it would blow up too much everything is, for example, um, pull requests. So um, you want to maybe build also um, your pull requests before you merge them into the master. So this is uh, this pipeline does not support this, and this is makes the example code in CD code quite a little bit more complicated. This means you need GitHub um, notifications when the pull request is, is created and you create, you have to create a pipeline itself because you cannot run it on your dev pipeline, for example, because it's always fixed to one branch. And uh, this means if, if you create a pull request, um, there must be running some code there to create a pipeline and also delete it afterwards. For example, if you have four open pull requests, you would have seen four more pipelines there. And, um, but you would need to do this, for example, in a professional proper, uh, environment and project to be able to run all the tests on the pull request before merging it back into, into the develop, development or in the main account. So this um, would complicate uh, things a little bit, um, but probably be necessary in, in a project setup. Cool, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, what else would you like to share with the audience? Any other open source projects that you think are worth mentioning uh, where people can uh, learn uh, something in addition to this uh, from you already or blog posts that you would like to uh, bring up? Uh, yes, um, just take a look in my GitHub account. There are various sources. So I have um, CDK examples. Um, there are a lot of CDK examples showing also using how to use PIP modules, so reuse some models for CDK. Uh, it's not only the pipeline, it's an example for uh, deploying a Fargate service with CDK. Uh, you have also quite some CloudFormation examples, a lot of stuff there. Um, uh, I have also what you're going to like, some uh, Java and Spring uh, containers to deploy as Fargate services there, <laughs> examples. 
And um, so you find in my GitHub repo a lot of stuff. You will also find on this uh, blog page I, I've showed uh, on my page. I mean, I will uh, um, give you all these links so you can yeah. pass yeah. over. Uh, you find some more blogs from me concerning um, batch environment, CDK, and and, uh, and other AWS topics as well. Also, I got a YouTube channel, and there are about 25 or 30 videos by now, um, where I'm also explaining in not in the blog but in the YouTube format um, a lot of things about AWS. And the last videos have been also about this CDK pipeline. And but a lot about containers, Fargate, and Kubernetes, and all this kind of stuff. Cool. Then let me add that to the show notes as well. And uh, yeah, and um, how can people uh, get in touch with you or ask you questions if they have any anything I would write, like to follow up on what they've seen today? Um, well, for example, um, on my YouTube channel, you can comment. I'm not sure I can always uh, answer there. But um, also on my uh, in, uh, website, where uh, the blog is hosted, is, is uh, the info email from my company. Um, but for real question concerning technical questions, um, I, I can probably pass you um, an email there where people who has um, really um, dedicated questions um, uh, can um, forward these questions straight ahead to me and I will try to get back to them. Awesome. So that means that you're not a Twitter or Mastodon junkie. Um, no. Because that's, <laughs> that, that's what I hear a lot, right? This is my Twitter handle or this is my Mastodon account. This is where you can reach out to me. Um, no, cool. I'm not using Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn, of course. Um, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, but but uh, um, not too much on Twitter. Okay, cool. Then thank you so much for taking some time out of your day um, to uh, present uh, this pipeline. And um, yeah, looking forward to do more collaboration. So if I can if I can join you on your channel to present some stuff that I've been doing, uh, let me know. Uh, we'd sure. be happy to do so. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. And have a great rest of your hopefully sunny day over there. Um, <laughs> here in Germany, it's been gray and raining the whole day. No, we're here, here. I cannot complain. We have a sunny day. And yeah, thanks so much to be here on your show of series. Um, it was a pleasure. And I hope uh, the listeners have um, got some um, insights into CDK and, and code pipeline with CDK. And yeah, you can also take a look to other projects, my GitHub or my blog. Thank you. Thank you. And greetings, bye -bye. Germany. Bye.